individual comes to a moment like this with a sense of triumph. In this case, Willem has earned the respect of his colleagues and is now a senior member of that community of which he is a, a, a part. And what we do in this inaugural is celebrate the individual. We celebrate the achievements of somebody like Willem. But they're also important because they give life to that very special relationship that we as a university have with, with the broader public. And we celebrate this relationship. We celebrate here this uh, attachment between ourselves uh, and the wider public. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about vaccines to prevent TB. Um, so TB is a disease of lungs normally. What we have here is basically, it's a bug, it's a bacterium that infects you and can you breathe it in and that can cause disease of the lung in some people. So what we have here are chest x-rays. This is a chest x-ray of a healthy person. You can see the heart in, in the middle and around the heart you can see the lungs which are darker and here you can clearly see where the TB is, this muck that shouldn't be there. Okay, so that's what TB actually is. So, um, so that's what TB is. Now, South Africa has a huge TB problem, especially here in Cape Town. So we have the second highest rates of TB in the, in the world. Basically, we, we've got the highest rate because the country that has the highest rate is, is the small little country called Swaziland. And um, so 1% of our population develops TB every year. So we've got 500,000 new cases of TB every year. This is massive, okay? We've got a huge problem we should do something about. Worldwide, 1.7 million people die from TB each year. Okay, now let's put that into perspective. So we all know what happened in Japan recently. We all know about the earthquake and how devastating it was. We know that 180,000 people have died, have, have died from this earthquake. And the, the, the devastation was terrible, as you can see here. Now, what, so let's put this into perspective. TB deaths, an earthquake similar to that in Japan, striking every fourth day. And we do not hear about TB. There are no advocates around because this is a quiet, this is a slow disease that happens very slowly and there's a lot of stigma surrounding it. Unless we get more advocates, we're actually not going to make any difference. And I don't think that TB deaths are any less devastating and has any less of an impact on the economy of communities or households, etc. So it's really something that we should do something about. Okay, so now what is, so there have been very beautiful epidemiological studies that have been done to, to, to look at exactly what should you be doing to make a difference. And the, clearly the one thing that, that always ranks up top of, uh, as, as well having, as having the most, well, or possibly having the most impact would be to have a vaccine that can prevent this disease. Now, again, what is a vaccine? A vaccine is something that prevents disease, and it usually does it by stimulating our immune system. So it stimulates either the cells of our immune system or it stimulates antibodies, which then is supposed to protect us against the disease. Now, this is different from a drug, which you usually use to treat a disease when it is there. Now, at SATV, uh, we're doing two groups of studies. I always like to group them together. We're testing new vaccines in humans, so we are in the process of developing new vaccines, but we're only, uh, we're only on, the, on the human side of this development. But we're also doing many other studies which, is, which really are, the, are there to address critical questions in TB vaccine development. There are many questions that, were, that are unanswered that are hindering us from actually getting ahead. So I'm gonna uh, talk about a few of, of, of these, these kind of studies that we're doing. And, but before I go on, I want, to, I want to first acknowledge the people I work with, because really this is not my work. <laughs> it really is everyone else's work that I just have the privilege of standing here and, and presenting. SATVI is actually a group at the University of Cape Town, so we're an academic group. Um, so we report to university authorities and we do research, that's our primary mission. And so um, because the Cape Town sites, Cape Town areas, such as the periphery of the city, is rel relatively over-researched already, our previous boss, which was Greg Hussey, decided to, to, to look into whether we could go to a semi-rural site outside the city. So that's why we chose, ultimately, we chose Worcester to go to. And, and it was a very good choice, I think, in retrospect, because Worcester 
um, is a community that has an incredibly high rate of tuberculosis and um, therefore if we bring with our research um, uh, studies new advances uh, to this community they would be the first to benefit actually from a new vaccine etc so in the end it's been a very good choice of a vaccine site so we have this vaccine site out in Worcester but we also have a group in Cape Town um, which is really uh, where we're really focusing on, on uh, lab activities now we're focusing on our immune systems how our immune systems protect us against tuberculosis these are all very important questions that we have to address if we want to, to, to develop TB vaccines further all right, so then we finally get to testing new vaccines. So let's give a little background about what are these vaccines. So um, this is the future of TB vaccines. We're going to give a vaccine, the first vaccine, which we call the prime vaccine, which has to cause the immunity to, to protect you. And then we're going to boost that immunity with more vaccines later on. Um, uh, and we want to give the boosts either when the children get their other childhood vaccines, which is at 6, 10, and 14 weeks, or at adolescence. And the reason is because the TB incidence in, starts rising dramatically in adolescence. Okay, so we have a vaccine now. We, this vaccine has been with us for nearly 100 years. It's called BCG. It's a mycobacterium like tuberculosis, but it's just a, a, a weaker mycobacterium. It's called Mycobacterium bovis that's been weakened. And um, the, uh, so, I'm going to just skip over the next slide, and this is really unfair to the people in my group because this has been the major focus of our, our, our work in the, over the last 10 years or so. Is I think there's no point in using new vaccines, fancy new vaccines, if you cannot use the current vaccine properly. And we don't know these things because these have never been tested because the vaccine is nearly 100 years old. So we spend an incredible amount of time looking at that, and we've actually re uh, re um, reached fantastic conclusions. Well, some of them are not definitive, but like science is in general. But, um, but we, we, for example, and I'm just going to show three highlights here. For example, we know that we, uh, so, so we know that if you give BCG at birth now, versus when you give BCG when a baby is 10 weeks old, the immune response is not nearly as good. Okay? And that makes total sense, because when you're born, you don't have as strong an immune response as when you're 10 weeks old. It's not the wrong immune response, because you cannot get, come out of out of the womb and immediately react to everything that's around you, okay? But it's, it's appropriate immune response, but, you can, but perhaps it's not good enough for a vaccine. We've shown that in, in premature babies, the vaccine, which, which I, this vaccine is given to premature babies all over the place, everywhere, it doesn't actually work that well. It doesn't induce the same kind of immune response as it does in, in, in babies that are not premature. And we've shown that in HIV-infected babies, it induces virtually no immune response. So this vaccine should not be given to HIV-infected babies because it can only cause problems. And so for that, for example, these results have translated into policy, and hopefully some, uh, with further studies, some of these will, more, will translate more into policy. So if we then get to the new vaccines, so obviously there are new boost vac prime vaccines, which are basically, um, I'll go through them uh, in a little while. Or uh, we, there are new um, uh, boost vaccines. Now, 40 new vaccines have gone into humans. We've, we're very fortunate here. We're the only site in the world, actually, that has tested multiple of them. We've tested at least four of these, and we're going to test three more this year. All right. The most exciting part of the story, I think, comes from a cow. Okay. So <laughs> this is, um, uh, we're working with this group at Oxford University, and cows also get TB. All right. In cows, you can obviously vaccinate against TB, and then you give them that you vaccinate them, and you can, unlike us, where we cannot give us the TB bacillus to see if you're protected or not, okay, but you can give a cow a TB bacillus, and you can see if that cow is protected or not. So they've this, this, these collaborators have used a range of, of vaccines, okay, um, and they've looked at whether the, the, the cows are protected or not protected. The extraordinary thing was our markers that we found in humans, those, te those eight markers worked as well in cows to look to show whether they protect. So it works across species and across vaccines. So it looks extraordinarily encouraging to us. So the capacity to too much or the wrong type of inflammation made 
predisposed to TB disease, and optimal regulation of effector immunity appears critical. And this is, of course, very important then for developing new vaccine strategies, understanding exactly what's going on. So again, if you've not followed anything, more is not better, but balance is good. And so, and, and I always show this, this slide, because uh, there's the very good studies that have shown amongst PhD students that the, pe the students that party do much better in the long term than the students that do not party. <laughs> okay. And the other bottom line is this, um, and that is that we probably need a complete new set of candidates to help us out. <laughs> Okay, so, um, so we have developed new tests and we're learning how to use new markers in these tests to assess whether TB vaccines will work. We're learning whether multiple new TB vaccines are safe and effective in humans. We're learning what immunity vaccines should cause and what not for protection against TB. And we're learning how our genetic makeup will determine vaccine success. So a few acknowledgements. Thousands of families at our field site that have contributed to our studies and they're not here. <laughs> so thank you very much. And I will go and give this talk in Worcester too, and hopefully we can commit, we can, we can um, uh, uh, bring the message across there. We've had many funds, these have been our major funders, the ARES Global TB Vaccine Foundation, the NIH, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the European and Developing Countries Trials Partnership, and the UK-based Qualcomm Trust. So, <laughs> so of course, first of all, this is my granny who died a few years ago, and so um, I, had a very, I think I had a very special relationship with her, and, but I just want to thank you, my family, and um, thank you for always wanting the best for me uh, in your quiet way. That's been fantastic. And then friends, um, this is Ivan Toms, who you heard all about. Um, thank you. I mean, I, I don't think I can, uh, I can thank you enough for what you're doing in my life. So thank you very much. And the reality in South Africa is such that the growth of the research enterprise needs many more such people. So Willem, in this respect, you are an outstanding role model for our institute and for the university. Your third feature, which was in brilliant display tonight, is your ability to mentor and to lead by example. Willem is passionate about training the next generation of scientists and clinician scientists. He's an enthusiastic and inspirational leader and mentor of students from honor students up to clinicians and junior scientists. And I think that the quality of the people attracted to Satvi, by virtue of your presence there, speaks for itself. You talk about advocates for the field. You are one, and one of the best. I thought it was a, a, a great lecture in, in terms of, well, I, I never knew what Willem actually did in real terms. So now at least I understand. So at least now his friends understand what he does. But um, he actually also explained some of the key things that they found out in, the, in a way which people can understand. So I think that he might have also stimulated a whole lot more advocacy around TB. TB because, the, you know, people now understand what it's about and that, that there's some, some really interesting findings coming out of the SAFI project which can be acted upon. I mean there's lots of adjectives that one could use for Willem as a friend, loyal, um, I mean incredibly gentle, considerate um, and loves cheese with a passion. So, yeah, when I understood, you know, the rating of the fridge, that's about the cheese. Oh, it was fantastic. I was, I was um, really happy to see Willem presented so simply and clearly. And uh, it's uh, an incredible motivation and inspiration to me as a scientist uh, early in my career. Um, and, uh, and just proud to be in the lab because uh, it, it's amazing to hear all the, the positive feedback that he gets. And